Hello and welcome to my sixth video lesson in using Blender 2.6. Today I'm going to be covering box modeling. Box modeling is the technique that you would use to create any object out of a cube or a box. So to make anything out of a cube or a box, we have to use uh, what's called edit mode. And to enter, enter edit mode, you have to have a, an object selected, uh, such as a cube. It has to be a mesh. And you press tab. And when you get into edit mode, by, by pressing tab, um, you can either start affecting vertices or vertexes, which are the single points at the corner of any polygon, or the edge, uh, which is a, the side or boundary be between two polygons, uh, or the face, which is the polygon, the solid face itself. So I can change any of these things. I can press scale to scale a face. I can rotate a face, and I can scale an edge. I can also rotate an edge. And I can, of course, move an edge. Um, and with vertexes, you can only move a vertex. You can't rotate or scale a vertex because uh, a vertex is just a single coordinate or point in space. It doesn't have any volume, so you can't rotate a single point or scale a single point. Um, so with box modeling, I'm going to undo a little bit. So Control Z uh, up until I get my cube back. There we go. Um, so with box modeling, we start with a cube. And with this cube, I'm going to select all the faces. So I'm going to go to face select mode down here and press A, and that'll either select all or deselect all. And I'm going to subdivide my cube. Now to subdivide, um, we need to open up our specials menu. So I'm going to press W, and that brings up the specials menu. And I'm going to select subdivide. And you'll notice that it makes a cut through every um, face in every direction. So it makes a cut along the uh, z-axis, the x-axis, and the y-axis, cutting my cube into, uh, or three times. But I can also, down here in my tool shelf, change the, the number of cuts, so I can turn that up. And I can make it really high, but it's not a good idea to go really high. So I'm just going to make two cuts so that my cube is kind of like a uh, Rubik's, Rubik's Cube. Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to make this Rubik's Cube into a head. And to do that, I'm going to make it round. So I'm going to select all the faces uh, in the center of each side. So there's going to be six faces I'm selecting. And of course, I'm selecting multiple faces by uh, holding Shift while I click. And then I'm going to press S. And because I have um, a side selected on every side of my cube, uh, it's going to scale out when I press S from the very center uh, or the median point of all of my selected faces. So I'm going to go ahead and press S, and you'll notice that my cube starts to look round because all the faces are going out from the middle, and all the faces are also getting bigger. So I'm going to maybe I'll switch views. So I'll go to my front view, and then I'll press S, and see if I can make it as round as possible from right about there. Good. Um, so now if I look and spin around my cube, I've still got these annoying um, corners on my cube. It still looks, um, well it looks round, but it looks still like it has a cube built into it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those eight corners. So I'm going to have the first one selected and hold shift and right click the other seven vertices that are sticking out. There we go. And I'm going to scale those inwards. And of course, because they scale towards the, their median point, in other words, the very center of the cube, um, they will scale inwards, and the cube will become fairly round. There we go. So out of this cube, which I made into a Rubik's Cube, essentially, and now it's pretty much a sphere, I can make anything I want that's round. So I'm going to make a character's head. So I'm going to go back to my front view, and I'm going to go back to face select mode, and I'm going to select the front face, and from this front face I'm going to make a nose, a really kind of simple cartoony, kind of like an Elmer Fudd nose. So I'm going to scale it down, because this, this face is going to create or be the base of his little nose. So maybe I'll scale it down to about there. And now I'm going to extrude it out. So I'm going to press E to extrude and click to let go. And I'm going to scale that to make it a little bit bigger for the LR FUD nose, and then extrude it again, and press S to scale, and then E to extrude it again, and this time I'll make it smaller. So as you can see, now I have something that looks kind of like a head, if you can imagine it. 
Um, what I might do now is go back into object mode, which I have, and click on smooth uh, in my tool shelf to make the object look a little bit smoother. And now I'll keep going. So I'll go back into edit mode. And now I want to kind of give him a cheekbone kind of area. So it looks like it's going in uh, above his cheek uh, to where his eye would be. So I'm going to go ahead and use the loop cut tool, which is control R. And it gives me that pink line, which you'll see, which you'll have seen in my last video. And I'm going to click to let go when I'm happy with where it is. Uh, so we're both there. And I'll slide it to where both I think it should go. And there we go. So now we kind of have an eye line. And I'm going to move that vertice and that vertice in. So you can kind of see now he has more of a brow shape and a cheekbone shape. I might go ahead and add one more. I'm going to put one down the middle of his face so that we can make... Oops, I'm going to press escape. Control R. And right there. And if I right click, after using the loop cut, it'll go. It'll make the cut right in the middle of the area that, that you looped cut. So now I can go ahead and I'll make his nose a little bit rounder. So still in edge select mode. I just select the faces and move them up, or the edges and move them up. Same thing on the bottom. A little bit too much. Let's see. I think my mouse needs new batteries. I'm going to do another loop cut, so Control R, and right in the middle, so right click, and I'm going to move the side ones out. Sometimes I make sound effects when I'm modeling, so if I do, uh, please ex excuse me. And there we go. I'm going to move the all the point, the vertice on the end of the nose out. And maybe I'll take all those faces and scale them down just a little tiny bit. Okay, um, maybe I will take these vertexes out a little bit to round out his cheekbones a little bit. Oopsie daisy, there we go. Um, what else could I use? Well, I'm going to make ears for him, and then we'll go ahead and make eyes. So ears will kind of be like... Uh, coming out from those two um, faces. So I'm going to scale those down a little bit first, and then I'm going to extrude them out a little bit. Now when you're extruding, I got a comment about this in, on a previous video. When you're extruding, it's a good idea to have your view at about 45 degrees. So that's about 45 degrees, because I'm looking at the face from 45 degrees. That would be straight on. And if I extrude it from looking at it straight on, it's hard to tell how far I'm extruding it. So I'll look at it from about there, and press E, and it's easier to, t to tell how far away I'm extruding it, or how far I'm extruding it. Um, I might do a control R and make a loop cut there, so we can bring up um, and make the ear a little bit rounder. There we go. So I hope you can tell where I'm going with this. Um, this isn't exactly how... I would uh, model a character from scratch. Um, there are better techniques, which I'll get to in future videos. So I'm going to pause the video now and come back when I have a slightly better looking Elmer Fudd kind of character. Alright, so I'm back. And I've done a little bit of work on my head, and, and there it is. Um, it looks a little bit more like a person. Actually, it looks kind of like an elf at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn smooth on. And so you can see what it looks like um, as as a smooth character. There's one more thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do at the end of this video, uh, which is right now, uh, to make my character look even better. Over here is my properties window. And there is, by default, it, it's on the render tab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this little wrench, which is for modifiers. And with the head selected, I'm going to add a modifier to that head called Subdivision Surface. And what Subdivision Surface does is it smooths out your mesh. So now I'll compare it to what it looked like before, uh, which is like that. And Subsurf, or Subdivision Surface, um, really adds more detail to it. Um, I can still edit the mesh um, in edit mode, but it looks very smooth. And you can turn the amount of subdivisions, in other words, how smooth it is, up to, I wouldn't go above two, personally. Um, so there's my head. Uh, thanks a lot.